Hey guys, it's Cal here from KR Sabres. Uh, this is going to be the first of a few different videos to do with uh, DIY tutorials. So, um, many of you know, if you followed me from the early beginnings of my YouTube channel, that I started off building Sabres small and slowly progressed my way to the, uh, the stage that I'm at now. Um, and uh, uh, one of the things that I did or wanted at the time was great DIY videos. Um, there was certainly massive amounts of information on forums such as FX Sabres forums and Imperial Royal Arms forums. Uh, however, video tutorials are always helpful for visual learners. Um, so I decided, uh, in addition to the launch of my KRS range, which can be seen here, I would do um, some DIY tutorials uh, going from stage to stage. So having uh, stunt setups, which is what this video is, it's going to be a basic stunt lightsaber build, uh, going through to uh, ones that use momentary switches and then advancing to sound installs. So um, the KRS uh, sabers are all in hand now. Um, you would have seen that I've been doing some uh, work on them and uh, they're going to be launched very soon so I needed to get these videos prepared for all of you so that when you uh, purchase your kit or if you purchase an empty hilt you can try and get stuck in uh, as soon as possible really. So um, today we're going to be doing a basic stunt lightsaber which means you have a, simple, a powerful LED and a simple uh, latching switch. Um, it's probably the most it's probably the ba most basic saber you can make and um, it's really simple you don't need too many tools um, obviously you'll need your soldering iron um, and a few other tools other than that. Uh, so today I'll just go through the KRS range so we've got the the KRS-1 which is this sabre here. Um, all of them have a one inch inner diameter so we've got KRS-1 and we have the KRS-2 which is this one here. They all come in a standard polished finish. Uh, we've got the KRS-3 which is this one here and we have the KRS-4 as well. So all four models uh, KRS-4 has been probably uh, more of the popular ones because uh, of the shroud feature. It seems to be a, a design feature that a lot of people like. Um, now the great thing about the KRS range is that you can um, get very creative with them. Uh, for example, here's one that I've done. It has some uh, acid etching on there. You've got uh, a sort of wood veneer around it on that one. And uh, I've also done recently a KRS-1 which I've done some acid etching on and some weathering on. So uh, that's the fun thing about these hilts is you know you have a blank canvas uh, that's fairly inexpensive and you can uh, go to town on it really and design something special and unique. So today I think I'm going to go for, let's do a KRS-3. So we'll do a KRS-3 for this tutorial. Um, a nice simple hilt, uh, plenty of space for doing a leather wrap which is also another tutorial uh, which will be on, is on the YouTube channel if you've seen it already. So we've got our KRS-1. Uh, when you order the, the hilts you'll be able to choose uh, an LED colour of your choice, a single pre-LED colour of your choice. So what you'll get in your package, uh, for UK buyers you'll get your battery. Uh, for international buyers unfortunately it's, uh, not, it's prohibited to ship loose lithium ion batteries so they won't be included but um, everyone will get a battery holder for their 18650 battery. You also get a 3D printed chassis sled which is um, compatible with the battery holder. There's also a space up here for a momentary to latching converter which I'll do in another tutorial. So if you don't like using a latching switch or you want to use a, a vandal switch um, which is momentary you can use these small circuit boards and um, there's a space in the chassis just here for them which you can put it in there. Um, but that will be for another video which I'll do soon. So you'll get your, your battery slid. There's a little handle on here which you can see allows you to uh, pull the chassis out. UK buyers you'll get an 18650 lithium ion battery and um, obviously international buyers you won't receive uh, the battery with that so you won't, there won't be an additional cost or anything for when you order. You'll also get a one inch heatsink module uh, you'll get your LED lens, you'll get your latching switch, this here. Uh, there's also a retainer ring for the switch. Um, personally, I like to just put a dab of glue on my switches. Um, there's a few different methods. You can put some 
uh, foil tape and friction fit it in there or you can get these bezels uh, you can get them from the custom sabre shop I'll design some bezels as well I don't have I haven't designed them at the moment but you can actually use the bezels to um, screw them in which for people who don't like using glue you can obviously uh, screw that in it's just a lot more fiddly which is why I like to use glue because I don't put too much on there uh, so it's always I'm always able to get it out in future and the switches are fairly inexpensive um, you'll also get your star thermal pad which should always be underneath your LED between the heat sink um, it helps to dissipate the heat and electrically isolate the uh, LED PCB and you've got your single Cree XP2 LED which uh, you'll be able to choose from colours red, green, blue, royal blue, white, amber and red orange uh, so you'll be able to choose from those colours and with each kit, whichever one you buy, you'll get your appropriate resistor for your LED uh, in this case we'll be using a 1 ohm 1 watt LED uh, we've got a royal blue LED we're using today because the Cree forward voltages are fairly high and close to the voltages of an 18650 um, it's actually okay just to use a resistor just for good practice and to um, uh, just limit the voltage just a little bit so we've got a 1 ohm 1 watt there is a LED resistor calculator which I'll go through in a separate video but I'll include the right resistor that you need for the kits anyway so you won't need to worry about that okay so let's get started just want to run through some of the tools that I'll be using today uh, I've just got a little um, sort of spatula tool um, just what I use to apply the flux because I think uh, the flux you don't really want to get it on your clothes on your fingers so it's just good to have something to apply the flux um, you can use anything from cotton buds or an old piece of plastic just anything really um, obviously you've got your flux uh, some solder Mine is 60-40, it says half a millimetre, it's quite thin solder but it's the one that I've used for all my builds. Um, if you don't know what flux is actually, it's a sort of like a, a creamy acid sort of thing, it, really just, it just helps the solder flow. So it's really key to have, um, I just use, it says Fry Power Flux, uh, Ideal Flux, and um, it's just simply uh, what they use to help the solder flow. So you apply it before you solder on and you'll see how the solder will flow nicely. So it's uh, really handy to have, I always use that. I've got my wire strippers, uh, so I've got, there are also wire snips at the same time, so I can not only cut my wires, but I can also strip them just here. So if you have a look, you can just put the wire in and then it strips them. They're really, really handy. These are made by uh, Amtec, A-M-T-E-C-K. Um, they're great to have, so if you haven't got some of these, these are really handy, maybe two, two tools in one. Allen keys, because you want to, uh, retain the heat sink which is held with the M3 grub screw um, so you want some allen keys as well um, I've also got my helping hands tools these ones are really fancy but you can get really cheap ones um, uh, on Amazon or eBay or something like that uh, I just got these so I'm a bit proud of them I'm just excited to use them really um, I've got my hobby vice which is good for holding the LED PCB and I've also got a pair of scissors for when I'm cutting the heat shrink uh, one of the other tools that I use is obviously my soldering iron. Uh, my soldering station, uh, actually, so it's not just a soldering iron, um, uh, comprises of a few different things. I have a hot air rework station, and I also have a bench power supply. Um, the reason why I have a bench power supply is it allows me to test out um, certain parts. So, for example, if I just put an LED here quickly, and uh, I wanted to test the LED before, I could dial in 3.4 volts, uh, which is uh, the sort of forward voltage. Or just a bit less and I can quickly test my LEDs by using my bench power supply so that is always good to have on hand um, this workstation is obviously a bit more expensive but um, you can still use a basic solar iron and make your own bench power supply just by getting a battery holder for example putting a battery in it and putting some leads at the end and you can uh, test out your battery supply there always good to have a multimeter as well just in case um, it's crucial for Sabre building so always have a multimeter and check out some videos on how to use your multimeter there's plenty of them on YouTube so now that we've run through some of the parts that we'll need um, we're gonna get started with the LED I always like to start with the LED module it just makes things simple so you'll get your LED that comes with your kit and you just want to hook it up in the vise like that there and also if you're under the age of 18 just make sure you've got an adult with you just keeping an eye on things because obviously you're working with um, solder hot solder it can sometimes flick up 
So make sure you have appropriate eye protection as well um, and just make sure that someone's close by just in case anything goes wrong. So you've got your LED here and what we're going to do, we're going to tin the pads. Now you'll notice on the LED, if I just use this resistor, um, you've got four pads, two labelled plus and two labelled positive. Um, they're opposite each other, so you've got positive, negative, and you have positive, negative. Um, you can solder either one. They're both exactly the same. For example, if I get my bench power supply, and I apply positive and negative voltage here. There we go, you see it lights up. Uh, but also I can do it here, and it lights up as well. So there's two different pads. Um, you can choose either or. It ha makes no difference. Choose either or. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply some flux. We've got our flux here, just to two of the pads. Let's get some flux. Pop some on the negative, pop some on the positive. Not too much, we don't need too much. And pop that to one side. Now when I'm soldering, I get my soldering iron up to about 400. Remember these PCBs are designed to try and dissipate heat. So um, unless you have your soldering iron quite high, it's quite difficult in order to get um, uh, the solder to flow on the pads. The flux obviously helps, but um, have it at about a, quite a high temperature and um, it should work for you. So I've got my solder here and what I want to do is I just want to get the PCB firstly nice and hot. So I can use my soldering iron and I can just hold it there. And I'll zoom in a little bit more because you might be able to see the solder flowing, the, the, not the solder flowing, sorry, the the um the flux starting to melt. So it'll just start to give way. Okay, we'll get a bit more heat under there. It's always good just hold your solder nine under there and wait till you see the flux start to disappear. Okay, so the flux doesn't look like cream anymore. It just looks like uh, clear liquid. We want to get a bit of solder on our soldering iron, like so. And we can start to tin the pads, like that. So that's one, one pad already tinned. Nice joint, nice shiny joint. And we'll put a bit more on our soldering iron. And we want to do the other one. So you see that? That simple. Just put a bit on your soldering iron and then touch it together. And you'll get a nice shiny joint there. Okay, so we've put our solder down now. And what we want to do is we want to snip some wires. So you see I've got some red wires and I've got some black wires. In this case we're going to use the red for the positive. So always keep your wires extra long. It's just good practice to have it in case you need to shorten them. I'll make mine on my cutting mat, I can measure it. So I'll make mine about, let's say, 40, 40 centimeters, just to be safe. Remember it's your first lightsaber build, so 40 centimeters. So we've got a 40 centimeter red wire and we've got a 40 centimeter black wire. Uh, the wiring that I use is from Rapid Electronics um, in the UK. Um, I think it's about 0.2 millimeter. 0.2. Yeah, 0.2 millimeter. I've also got thinner wire, which is about 0.1, so which is the green wire there. But for LEDs and batteries, I like to use a bit of a thicker wire. So we've got 40 centimeters there. So we've got one black wire and we've got one red wire. So now I'll show you uh, how useful this um, wire snipper can be. So simply you get you get your wire here. Let me just get it in the shot. Get your wire, and then you just get this, and you just put it there, and that's it. Your wire is snipped, all nice and snipped, ready to tin. So we'll do the other one. Grab that. Ooh. Snip again. Nice and easy. So we'll zoom out a little bit here. So you want to get your red wire and I just get a little bit of 
flux on there not too much just a little bit and then we want to get some of our solder like so which we can just sort of flick up get some of our solder get some on the iron got a little blob on there now and I'll just touch it on there and there's a really nice clean soldered tinned wire we want to do the same to the black one so just put a little bit of flux on it not too much get your soldering iron and just tin it it's nice and tinned ready to ready to solder onto the pads so once again we'll find our negative and positive pads so we've got let's get this in the camera there we go so we've got our negative pad which we want to solder in a direction so that when we fold the wires over it will go through the grooves on the PCB that's important so we want to heat the soldering pad and there we go the res residual flux that was there before helped the solder flow and now I've got a really neat tidy shiny solder joint so we've got our negative wire on there we'll turn it around opposite side and we'll do our positive wire which we simply just touch here like that and that's it we've soldered up the LED nicely we've got nice solder joints on there and we are ready to start assembling the heatsink module so we have our soldered LED uh, the joints are nice and tight just always give a little tug on them make sure there's not any bad joints you'll usually be able to find bad joints if the uh, solder looks um, sort of cloudy or milky sort of color it looks dull um, also if there's any flux left on the LED it's always good practice just to wipe any of it off uh, you can use a q-tip why I use just get any leftover flux on there because you don't want that uh, when it cools down again it turns into a sort of cream so it's not very nice sometimes <laughs> but okay so we've got our LED now we want to get our LED module which we've got and we can put the solder to one side for now we've got our LED module and we've got our lens with our thermal pad so first things first you want to disassemble your uh, LED module and the thermal pad will be double adhesive so it will have two sides of the adhesive so you've got it there and you want to find just where it is centered on the uh, LED on the LED module and you want to make sure that the grooves in it are parallel with the holes so if we just do that Get that in the middle. Okay, I think that's good. And then I like to get my uh, LED module and just sort of push on the ground like that. Get the bond nice. And then we can peel the other side. Which will expose the other adhesive side. So we've peeled that off now. You can just put this to one side. And now what you want to do is you want to feed your wires through. So now that we've got our LED module, if I just zoom in here, our LED I mean, to get zoomed in here. So what I want to do is I just want to bend the wires a little bit and just get them properly set up like that. Just get them in the right place, ready to pass through. So we've got one wire which is going to go through the module now. Any hole is fine because we'll just have to align the other one so I want to put it through push it through here just focus in there we go push that through here which we've got how have we got it it's going to be like that so we've got that one and now we know where the black hole is going to be which is going to be this hole here. So 
pull those through and then feed them through there and you just want to line up your LED now that we've got it on there with the other holes and we just want to push right there like that so just want to push on the PCB make sure it's nice and tight and now we can get ready to put the lens on so we just get our lens pop it there on top like that and we'll get our top of our heatsink module and we'll just slide it over and screw that tight and what you'll notice is it starts to squeeze down on the LED module and that keeps the lens in place so now that we've got our LED module set up what we want to do now is attach the resistor so the resistor that comes with the kit or the whatever resistor that you're using for your application because uh, obviously if you're not buying a kit this is still the same tutorial for building a basic lightsaber for example if you want to get your parts from the custom saber shop in the USA um, we want to start attaching the resistor so it's a 1 ohm 1 watt resistor that we'll be using today uh, it's a carbon film resistor and uh, we will attach it now so you can attach it to either the negative or positive wire I just like to use the positive just because I've, I've always done it that way so what we're going to do we're going to snip the wire just about say here like that so there's a little bit of meat left on there we'll just put that wire to one side because we're going to use that again and we want to snip the end of this wire like so and let's get ready to tin it so we'll just do that there and we'll get a bit of get a bit of solder ready here I'm just going to tin that wire a little bit, a bit too much oil on there. I'm going to leave the rest on the solder and iron. So we've tinned that, and we're going to snip the resistor wires because they're obviously too long. So we want to snip them about that much so that we can get ready to attach the wires. So we'll put those uh, wire cuts just to one side, and we'll get ready to attach the wires. So this is where the helping hand tools come in handy so I've got my helping hand tools here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to get it to hold the resistor for me just like that so it can hold the resistor for me and then I can just simply attach the wire now before you attach it remember to attach your heat shrink because uh, a lot of people might get confused and just want to attach it straight away but obviously that would be a bad idea because you'll forget your heat shrink so i just zoom in and focus on here. Okay, so we want to just make sure that we've got enough length there. So we've got, yeah, we've got enough length there. We'll take some thin heat shrink and our scissors and cut, let's say, I don't know. Hmm. Let's have a look, let's cut about that much, about one and a half centimetres, one centimetre, was it one and a half? It was bang on one and a half, wow, good eye. <laughs> so we want to slide the heat shrink over the wire, like so. Sorry if it goes in and out of focus, guys. It's on autofocus at the moment. If I could maybe zoom out a little bit, it might help. Yeah, it's just focusing on my hand at the moment, but I will. Okay, so now that we've got the heat shrink on there, ready to go, we get ready to attach our wires. So we want to apply some flux onto the end of the resistor and onto the end of our wire, like that. We've got some solder on our iron already from before, but if you don't, always add a bit on, and we just want to attach that on there. And you'll get a really, really nice joint with the solder. Really tight joint and it's got a nice shiny joint and now we can apply our heat shrink so if I just move this to the centre so you guys can focus in on it still don't want to focus there we go okay so we've got our resistor on there now we want to slide our heat shrink up I always like turn my heat shrink because it just helps it move now obviously if you don't have a, a salt SMD 
a workstation, which is a hot air reworkstation. Um, you can use like a, a lighter, but very lightly. You don't want to hold the lighter uh, against the um, heat shrink because it will just melt the heat shrink. You just want to apply some heat. You can use a hair dryer or a hot air gun. Um, obviously, if you have a higher end soldering station, you'll have a hot air rework station on there, and you can lift up your hot air gun and just apply some heat to the heat shrink, like so, not too much, and that will obviously shrink and tighten around. Uh, the wires protecting any exposed connections. So our resistor is attached now. We want to attach it again because we want to attach our red wire back. So we'll hold on to the resistor again. Let's hold it a bit lower down so the heat sink isn't just hanging on that wire. And we want to take the red wire that we had before and we want to attach that back on. So let's take a snip it off like that apply a bit of flux to the wire and onto the resistor just the cable do we have any solder on our soldering iron? nope, so we want to add a bit more solder onto our soldering iron tip like so and we just want to hold that there that's it nice tight joint again clean joint as well it's ready to go and get rid of the helping hands tool now until later Let's put that to one side and we've got our uh, wires done for our resistor nice and tight but what we can do is now snip a bit more heat shrink I'll just use wire snippers this time instead of scissors put that to one side and let's attach onto the red wire, feed it through like so, so the wires on there, get some hot air again and shrink that, like I said you can use a hair dryer, you can use a lighter very quickly so that is our LED module complete we've got this resistor on there we've got the positive and negative wire on there and we are ready to move on to the next stage we have our LED wired up we want to wire up our switch now this is going to be a simple latching circuit so if I just explain it to you um, we've got our battery holder here what happens is is that the negative of the LED is wired to the negative of the battery and then the positive of the uh, LED goes to the common on the switch and then you'll notice on your switch you've got two different prongs you've got a normally open which will be shown as NO or a normally closed which will be uh, shown as NC um, we're going to go for normally open which means that when we push the switch down the circuit is closed and when we press it up the circuit is open so we want to have it on normally open so we'll have this wire going to the common and then we'll have another red wire coming from the normally open, the NO, go into the positive of the battery and that will essentially close the circuit. So what's happening is, is that when the switch is pushed down, it closes, positive voltage is going straight to the LED and then when we let go, it breaks that connection and no voltage is going to the LED. So if you imagine electricity like a water flow, um, we've got electricity flowing into the switch and then until we press the switch down, the water won't carry on flowing to the LED, it will stop. So when it's open, the flow stops, and you close it, the flow carries on to the LED, and it's as simple as that. So this is basic circuits 101 really. So um, we want to wire up our switch. Now, obviously we've got our KRS3 hilt, and we want to start attaching the wires. So what we're going to do is now, we're going to install the LED, and retain it in there. So, if we just take the pommel off, like so and we want to slide our wires in making sure that the positive wire comes out of the switch hole because remember we've got to wire up our switch let's do this so this is where it would be handy to get some sort of uh, tweezers or something like that if you've got some tweezers or pliers you just want to see where that red wire is grab that which I've got it now I want to pull that one through, so we've got the red wire through and then just carry on feeding the wire through until the black wire comes out 
Let's just have a look. We've got our black wire here. Let's grab that through there. Now you'll see on your KRS hilts there's a small M3 grub screw. This is where your Allen keys come in. We want to get our grub screw and loosen that. I usually take it all the way out so I can see where the heat sink module is. So if I just have a look, you can see it's there. Just push it down until I see it. And I can see it now. I don't want it to be right next to the switch. So I'll see it now. And tie that up. And just make sure it's not too far. Because we've got our switch going in there. I'll push it up a little bit. So our heatsink is nice and secure. Now, we've got our resistor showing there, but remember the wires are going to go back inside. When we put that back in there, we can just tuck that back in. So, let's go ahead and start soldering the switch. As I mentioned, we've got three pins. We have a common, and we have a normally closed and a normally open pin. Uh, we won't be needing the normally closed pin, so we can snip that off, and we'll just be using the normally open and the normally common pin. So let me just take a close look, make sure it's right. So I want to cut the NC pin, which is that one there. There we go. And now we've got two pins, which will make it a lot more simple to understand that we need to attach our um, wires to. So let's go ahead and cut some red wires now that we've got that done. So I need one red wire to go from the switch to the positive of the battery. So we've got, so again we'll get what, like 40 centimeters, just to be safe, like that. And we've already got a red wire that we need to attach already, which is from here. So we want to snip this wire, make it a little bit shorter. Since we don't need it that long, we can make that shorter. Get rid of this wire, just put it to one side. And then we've got our long wire which we need to pre-tin. In fact, both wires we need to pre-tin really. So if we snip this and snip that, like so, we'll apply some flux on either end. Get our soldering iron and some solder. And tin that and tin the other one. So both wires are nice and tinned now, which you can see if I just zoom in. Both wires nice and tinned, ready to go. Now what you can do as well is you can tin your switch um, that way uh, you'll have a good connection. I don't generally tin the switch wires because I just get, I sort of get my helping hands tools ready. Let's have a look here. Move these ones up. Save a bit more room. So, I'll usually just get my helping hands tools and I'll grab the wires like that. Just make sure they're held nice and straight. And then I want to put some heat shrink on there. So I don't forget. Just zoom in. Yeah, focus there. I'll just move that for the camera so you guys can see a little bit better. So I want to snip some heat shrink for the solder terminals. Get that on there as well. Just push it down a little bit. With the helping hands tools. And we'll start with the centre pin first. It's easier to solder out outwards. And we want to get some solder on here. So we just want to touch it. Now we have a very nice connection between the pin itself and the wire. So that didn't require any pre-tinning because 
we use just a little bit more solder and it will flow all around the pin and the wire which is very handy so then we want to push our heat shrink up heat that like so and now we want to do the other wire, the, the other wire that we cut so we want to get our wire ready which we don't need to put heat shrink on just yet we want to put some flux on there a little bit of flux on the other pin get some solder, a nice healthy bit of solder on the end of your soldering iron like so and that's it another very neat shiny solder joint like I said remember any excess flux you just want to wipe that off with a q-tip so we don't need our helping hand anymore we'll cut one more piece of heat shrink like so put that on there bit of hot air seal that heat shrink up and now we have our switch connected so now what we can do is we can thread through our positive wire because this is going to be on the positive now grab it with our tweezers which are here and we can push the switch through now you don't want to glue the switch yet because remember you want to test everything make sure it's alright but you can see sort of how the how the switch will go in there and you can just pull the wires through make sure there's not any knots or anything let's pull that through so we've got our switch in now finally we just get ready to wire up our battery pack so the final stage of our build is to start wiring up the battery pack um, you'll notice on the battery holders that I ship out currently they'll have these little tabs at the end of them um, you can just use some pliers you want to break those off so you just go like this and they just snap off like so just get them like that and snap them off now also underneath the battery holder there'll be a small little nub just in one of the corners which you should be able to see this small little nub here you just want to snip that off as well like that with your wire cutters get rid of that if it still leaves a little bit on there you just want to get a bit of sandpaper on there so on our battery holder you usually want to have positive upright and it will just sort of snip snip into the chassis like that it will just snip in really nice and easy and if there are if it does protrude out a little bit too much like I said you can use just a bit of sandpaper and uh, file down any nubs but it should slide in absolutely fine into the chassis now what I like to do is I like to pre-tin I like to pre-tin the battery terminals just to be safe so what we'll do is I stand it upright like that and then I get my soldering iron and some solder and I'll pre-tin these pads like so I like to use quite a bit just to be safe so we've got a nice uh, pre-tin joint there now for it to cool down a little bit then I'll flip it on its side and I'll do it again so I want to pre-tin the other side like so and that way we've got some nice solder to attach our wires to to the battery pack like that and that's it so we've got our battery pack pre-soldered now and we've already got the positive and wires positive and negative wires coming out of the bottom of the saber so now we can get the saber in our case the KRS3 and we've got our chassis which the front of it will have some holes we want to pass those holes through through the middle one through the second middle one because we're not going to be using uh, a momentary to latching switch converter or a push button switch board we just want to feed those wires through like so so now we've got our chassis and we've got our battery holder so the negative will be at the bottom so I want to run the wires through those channels lift up this red one 
clip it in and this is going to give me the distance that I need to trim my wires to. So this is a wire excess here. I just want to trim that one about there and I want to trim this negative one about here. That way now we've got the perfect length for the wires. We don't need to worry about anything else anymore. So we can take the battery holder off now and we want to pre-tin these wires. And remember not to lose them out of their position. But we can push the chassis in now, because it's in there now, we've got the right length, we can push the chassis in. And this will help with soldering. So we'll get some flux on these wires. Get some flux on there. Just a little bit. We want to tin these wires with our soldering iron. Nice and pre-tinned. And we want to get our positive end, like that, and we want to solder those together. So, if I just get this wire, make sure that's the positive end because it's marked. I want to heat up the pre-tinned already, pre-tinned area, and we've got a nice, let's help that cool down, we've got a nice joint on there now for the positive wire. It's really nice and sturdy, clean, shiny, exactly what we want. I'll just show you. That's perfect. So, then we want to do the negative wire now. So we're just going to heat up. Let me see if I can zoom in here. Focus on here. I move to the center a little bit. That's better for the camera. I want to get this. Make sure my hand's not blocking it. Heat up this solder like that. The solder's melting, and that is our battery pack connected. So this is where the moment of truth happens. We've got our battery pack connected. Wires are the perfect length, so we can feed those wires through. Just make sure they're in the right channels. Make sure it's in the center channel. You can just pull it up a little bit like that. So that one's not just quite in the center just yet. So I'm going to feed that wire through just a little bit. Okay, so our battery pack's clipped in. Uh, you can also use a bit of glue for the battery pack just to keep it steady. Remember, put your positive upright and your negative at the bottom. So our battery's in now. And we want to press the switch. And that's it. Push it down, it's on. Push it up, it's off. That simple. So now that we've got our switch successful and our, our circuit, we can just turn the chassis a few times, just helps to coil the wires, push it in. We've got our pull tab out there already. Screw the pommel on, just push it in a bit more. Screw the pommel on. Now, obviously, there's a bit of a rattle in there. But I'll show you a good trick that you can use, and it's just by using some foam. So due to the lack of um, uh, wiring and parts inside, you might find that you get yourself a bit of a rattle. So what you can do is, you can just get some hobby foam, something like this, and if you just coil it up like that, just put a bit inside. Like I said, it's always removable. Now when you push the chassis in, it will have something to act against. And we can just push it in like that. And it's a bit tight now. So you can see the pull tab sticks out a little bit. But when you use your pommel, it will push against it and you haven't got that rattle anymore. Obviously the rattle at the moment is the switch, but we're going to secure that in place now. But as you can see, it's all working and apart from the switch, there's no rattle. So for the switch, I'm going to use just some Cyanacrylite. And I'm going to put two small dabs 
just on either side. So the top side, like so, let's get the top side. One small dab because if I only take out in future, I want to be able to. So we've got a small dab there, flip it upside down 180 degrees away, and I want to put another small dab just there. And like I said, if you don't like to use glue, there are alternative methods. Um, like I said, you can get those bezels from the custom saber shop, put them on the inside, and uh, use the nut to secure it. But it's very fiddly. So now we just want to push the switch down and just hold it there for about 30 seconds. So there we have it, guys. We have our first, for some of you, it might be your first, your first lightsaber all ready to go. Nice bright Cree LED blade, uh, LED, nice bright Cree LED, sorry, and you've got a nice CNC machined aluminium hilt with a lithium ion battery pack and a latching switch, which is in there nicely now. Um, just to show you with a blade in what this is like, let's just zoom out a little bit. We've got our blade in here, Let me turn it on, like so. So guys, this is going to be the first of many tutorials to come. And I hope that it helps you start to learn the art of saber building and get you guys on the road to doing more complex builds and producing some fantastic products. So thanks very much for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, if I've forgotten to mention anything, just let me know in the comments below. Also, let me know if you manage to make one. If you do manage to make one, shoot me a message, shoot me an email, send me some pictures of your finished kit, and um, I'll be happily to share it on the Facebook page and uh, uh, send you an email back congratulating you. So um, I'd be very happy and uh, really excited to see what you guys come up with. And remember, like I said, you don't have to do just the basic installs. You can do some more advanced things. I've got my asset etching tutorial on YouTube as well. Um, I'll do a few different tutorials about uh, doing other things like weathering and um, uh, battle damage or something like that that you might be interested in. Um, also how to wire up illuminated switches because some people might want to wire up an illuminated switch. Um, all of which very simple to do and um, it's a good starting point for those getting into the hobby. So thanks again guys for watching. Any questions just let me know. And um, yeah, leave a comment below if you manage to get one of these done. And if there's any other tutorials that you want to see, I'll happily try and get them done for you. Uh, so yeah, see you next time guys. Don't forget to subscribe for the other videos. And I will see you on the next video.